What are seven ways that you can gain more credibility and influence with your senior executives and your board of directors? I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath, and this is our weekly insights video. There are seven ways that I can think of that you can build more credibility and influence with your executives. I want to talk through those with you today and give you a little bit of insight from my perspective on how you can go about accomplishing this. The first one is to be a credible expert in your field. You need to establish yourself as an authority in the field that you're in, in your area of expertise. This involves not only having a deep understanding of your industry and your particular field, but it's staying abreast of the latest trends and challenges. What's the latest thinking going on in your field and in fields that are related to yours? And then how can you leverage that expertise to provide valuable insights that your executives may not find elsewhere? For example, if you're the resilience leader, I would expect that you are on top of all of the key trends and technologies related to business continuity, crisis management, crisis communications, and related fields like IT disaster recovery, cybersecurity, and, and, and more. Number two is that you need to become a very effective communicator. You need to work to make sure that your communication style matches the preferences of your executive team. That means being concise but thorough. It means using data and real world examples to back up the points that you are making. It's making sure that you are being candid and direct and not beating around the bush, not telling them what they wanna hear, but telling them your actual opinion about the issue and how to go about solving the problem. Remember here that it's not only what you're saying, but it's how you're communicating those things. And as one of my leaders and mentors always said, when dealing with executives, be good, be brief and be gone, move on. Number three is networking. You need to be seen as an industry leader in your space. You need to develop and maintain a robust network within your organization and outside of your organization. And this is just not about knowing people, but it's also about nurturing meaningful relationships that can help you. It helps in gaining diverse perspectives and facilitates easier buy-in for your initiatives, particularly inside of your organization. Number four, you need to demonstrate emotional intelligence or EQ. Having a high EQ is crucial for understanding and navigating the complex interpersonal dynamics at the executive level. That involves empathy, self-awareness, and the ability to manage your own emotions when influencing others. For example, just yesterday in a client conversation, we were interviewing their chief legal officer as a part of a program evaluation, and she had some challenging uh, questions for us about the scope of our engagement and how we were aligning with other efforts inside the organization. None of, none of these were challenges that I've never heard before. None of these were challenges that caught me off guard. I just calmly listened to her questions and then talked about what we have seen, what have we heard so far in the evaluation that we conducted. I have high emotional intelligence. I demonstrate that in that interaction and we were able to move on and have a very successful discovery conversation from there. Number five, you need to lead your function with vision and purpose. Executives are more likely to be influenced in my experience by leaders who have a clear, compelling vision and who can articulate that vision and that that vision aligns with your organization's goals and values. That as we've talked about before, that you can show how your program supports with and aligns with the company's strategic objectives. Number six is your decision-making acumen. You need to show that you can make tough decisions, balancing risks and benefits effectively. You wanna be decisive, but open to feedback. This builds confidence among executives in your leadership capabilities. This is often something that leaders look at in terms of how you manage conflict and how you manage performance within your organization. If you are perceived as someone who does not hold your own team accountable or does not hold yourself accountable, then you will not gain their confidence in this way. So you want to make sure that you're hiring the best possible talent for your team that you can and that you're not tolerating poor performance in your organization. And number seven, which ties to this, is build a track record of success. You need to consistently deliver upon the promises that you set and the objectives that you have outlined. A history of successful and difficult projects that you have completed successfully. A history of 
problem solving for the organization will significantly enhance your credibility and influence. So these are seven ways to address one of the biggest challenges that I hear from resilience leaders. How do you build more uh, confidence and more credibility and influence within your C-suite? This uh, will help you, I think, in your career and help you be able to advance your program and gain the resources and capabilities that you need. That's it for this edition of our weekly insights video. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.